um, ready to talk about the uh, file storage service. Um, in the last couple of videos, we covered the script hooks and the general settings. So if you have any questions about those, definitely jump back and check those out. Um, but we are uh, right now going to go ahead and cover um, the file storage service, which is which is by far the most um, commonly used storage service. Uh, now, the main goal of file storage service is to take photos out of Cloud Card that are in a specific state and to um, store them onto the file store, uh, onto a file system uh, that can be a local file system or it can be a uh, you know a network share um, that's that's mapped or mounted um, to whatever host the downloader is running on, uh, and that's a very common way um, for for uh, the Cloud Card Photo Downloader to be to be used. All right, so <clears throat> let's talk about the simplest setting, um, which is. Um, the uh, photo directories. Okay. Um, now, how do I specify the storage service? We talked about that earlier, but just just as a, a quick reminder, uh, that's set up here in the general settings. Uh, it tells the downloader which storage service to use. The default is uh, file storage service, so you don't need to specify that. It'll if you don't put anything, it it will uh, use a file storage service. Okay. Um, the all right. So. And this is just reminding you of that. All right, but this setting right here, the photo directories. Okay, so right now um, the default uh, is actually incorrect. Um, the default is uh, to store the photos in a, a subfolder called uh, downloaded photos. So I, I need to actually uh, to correct that. You know what? You guys um, don't mind watching me fix something real quick, do you? Uh, Here it is. All right. Downloaded photos. There we go. Commit that change. All right. Apologize for that little detour. Let's go back down and check. Uh, we just want to make sure that everything is correct. All right. So the file store service, by default, it's going to store the photos in a folder called downloaded photos. That is a meet that's like immediately below wherever where it's running. Okay, and we are seeing that right here. Okay, but let's say we don't like that. Okay, we want to store them somewhere else. Okay, so uh, maybe we want to store them in a in a photo called uh, or a folder called images. So uh, we will go ahead and um, paste that setting down there, and we're going to store it in a, a folder called images. Let me save that. Um, close this and run it. Oh, let's see. That's right. I still had that error in there from the last video. Um, so let me just close out of this because you can see that it ran. Um, and I'll fix. Remember this from the last video if you didn't watch it. Um, that's what that was. All right. All right. But you can see it created an images directory, and there's my my two folder uh, photos, and they were downloaded at 11:09. Okay. So that's cool. That makes me happy. Um, so what if, uh, uh, and this sometimes happens, what if I want, actually want the, the photos in multiple locations, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get rid of those. Um, and uh, let's say that I want the photos in um, images and another directory called, um, you know, send to banner. I don't know, right? So. Um, Another one called yeah, CS Gold. Who knows, right? So we've got some directories here, um, and these can be um, uh, you know absolute file paths. They can be relative file paths. Uh, whatever works. So let me save that, um, and we're going to go ahead and run this one more time, and we're going to see that um, there we go. My photos are same photos get created in each of those uh, locations. Okay, that way you don't have to. Uh, run a separate script that's watching for Cloud Card Photo Downloader to finish up so that it can, you know, disperse the photos to various different places. Okay? Um, so that is uh, the photo directories. We're going to go ahead and, um, and uh, just put them in, in one place. We're just going to um, get rid of that setting real quick. So that's the photo directory setting. We're going to get rid of that. That way they'll just be stored back in downloaded photos. Um, and I can get rid of these 
these directories as well. Move those to the trash. Okay. <clears throat> now that's the the very simple version of uh, the file storage service. We're gonna I'm gonna jump past this database stuff for a second, and I want to talk about um, some of the things that you can do to really customize uh, the file storage service. Okay. Um, first off, you can use a file name resolver. Okay. Um, this is a, a, a good use case for this would be uh, if you don't want to give us your student ID, okay, we're totally okay with you not doing that. Uh, you might have a table, sort of a translation table, um, and uh, either in a, a, a CSV file or it could be um, uh, in a database table, etc. Um, in this case, it happens to be, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've implemented this for a database file name resolver where the student ID that we were able to get from um, SSO was different from the student ID that needed to be saved for the card production system. Um, so what we did was we um, uh, would pull the photo down and then we ran, we used the database file name resolver to look up in the database to find out what the correct um, file name needed to be for the card production system, right? And then we save, you know, and we use that as the file name. So that's kind of how the database file name resolver works. It's got a couple of settings. <clears throat> Here's an example. Um, so the uh, the first set, uh, setting is the uh, the query. In fact, sorry, the only setting for this is the query. Okay. Um, and here's an example. You know, select the first, you know, top one, uh, first student ID from my table where external ID equals such and such, um, and the other column and some other column is like, you know, ABC, um, order by uh, the date created descending. Okay. So that's just a uh, just a an example query that maybe you know that you could specify in there. This is perfectly valid. This question mark is important though. The, identi the, the card holder's identifier is going to get, um, you know, injected right there. So, in this case, I'm saying, hey, you know, I've given them this some sort of external ID, right, which will, should match up with identifier, and I want to pull from that same row, I want to pull the student ID, and that's what I'm going to use um, to, uh, to save this. So, it should be a, um, a query that re returns a single string. Um, from the database, um, and that string is going to be used um, to uh, uh, as as the file name that the the file gets saved as. Okay, so um, if you've got questions about that, and I'm sure you will, um, just uh, give us a holler, and we can help you get that set up. Um, so then there's uh, preprocessors and postprocessors. <clears throat> okay, and we've used both. Um, there have been times where um, in, in one instance, uh, uh, and actually, first let me let me talk about the, the couple settings here. Um, so the default post processor. So every photo, right, is processed through a post processor. But the default post processor is the do nothing post processor. It's really just a placeholder um, that just says we're not really we're not going to uh, post process this photo. Okay. Um, the only other post processor that we support right now is the bytes link preprocessor. I'm sorry. Oh, I've been misspeaking. The, uh, I've been saying post-processor and I meant pre-processor. Okay, so, but anyway, uh, the same, the, everything is, is still exactly the same. We have a do-nothing pre-processor that doesn't do anything, and that's what happens by default. Uh, but there is also a bytes link pre-processor um, that can modify the external URL of the photo, because when uh, CloudCard uh, photo downloader, you know, calls out to CloudCard online photo submission and says, Hey, online photo submission, give me the photos that need to be downloaded. What it's actually getting back is information about the photos, right? The photo themselves, the actual binary JPEG itself is, um, is stored um, at a URL that's inside of, of the data that, get the, that the downloader gets back from online photo submission, right? Uh, and, but uh, in some situations, because of firewall rules, etc., you might need to rewrite that that um, link in some ways, okay? And this allows you to do that, okay? Um, this will probably be expanded. We'll probably have other preprocessors in the future, but um, just so you know, um, that's available to you, okay? Um, and uh, the the settings for that for that byte sync preprocessor are described here. Uh, basically, you just specify a URL. You know, uh, I didn't actually give an example. I probably should have. 
um, and uh, the uh, public key, um, uh, this token public key with the brackets on it needs to be somewhere in that URL and that is going to be replaced uh, by the, uh, the, ex the, the public key of the photo. Um, so anyhow, uh, you'll know if you need this. Uh, if you run into firewall issues, uh, we can kind of help with that, uh, at least uh, for now. And we might be able to set up proxies, etc., so that um, uh, you can access what you need to access. All right, um, the uh, post-processor settings, okay? Very similarly, okay, after each, and a post-processor fires for every single photo. Um, the default is to do nothing, right? Um, just, uh, but the the uh, other option is the database post processor. Okay, um, and in this case, this is probably a, a this is definitely a more likely use case. We've already had several schools um, that have needed to use this, where they're saving a photo to the file system, but they also want to write something to a database. Uh, it might be just updating a timestamp so that it'll trigger some sort of integration. It might be writing the um, the file path. Um, to that photo into the uh, database. Uh, it could be, you know, what, whatever, uh, several different things that can be done there. Um, and uh, these are the settings. So you can tell there's, there's quite a few settings for the database uh, post processor, okay? Um, I'm gonna give you um, just a, a quick sort of example, okay? Um, so in this case, uh, this use case, we need to update um, you know, some table, my table, and uh, we need to uh, set the date created field, we need to set the file location, and we wanna do that obviously where the student ID is equal to um, our identifier, okay? Um, and so these question marks, just like in the earlier query, these question marks are the places where our parameters are going to be inserted, okay? But in this case, there can be multiple parameters, okay? Um, so we need to specify what's actually gonna be um, passed in. And there are several different options um, for parameters, quite a few actually, okay? The most common parameter is probably gonna be uh, the identifier field, or which is more commonly known as the student ID. Um, but you could use the cardholder's email address, um, you could pass in the file name, the current timestamp, et cetera, et cetera, okay? In this case, um, we are passing in a timestamp for the date created and um, the file's location, or um, and this file name here is the full file name, including the path, okay? So that's what we're gonna pass in here, and uh, the student ID is gonna receive the identifier. So we've specified the query. Uh, here's an example of, in this exact same uh, use case, what the, um, the value of um, this, the param names uh, setting would need to be. It would need to be timestamp, so this parameter, and then, um, well, actually no, it's a, in, in this case we said notes. Notes is a custom field. Um, so it'd be storing the whatever was in the notes value as the file location, which is probably not terribly useful, but um, I, I specified this just so you would know that you can, uh, if, you, if you specify the exact name of a custom field, that will, um, will get inserted in, and then the identifier, okay? So let's say this was like, you know, uh, first name, and then this could be first name, um, and then that would get uh, updated, the, the first name record, okay? Um, and then we also need to know what type of parameters those are, okay? So in this case, the timestamp is a SQL type timestamp. Um, the notes is an in varchar, and the identifier field is a, a varchar, okay? Uh, and these, of course, need to correspond with the, um, the, the exact uh, database that, that you're working with, okay? So that's a, a really high level. You're probably gonna, you know, if you're using this, um, my guess is you're probably already signed up for the A plus plan um, and we'll be helping you anyway, but just so you know, that's how that works. Okay, so that was a lot, but that was the um, the file, so, um, file storage service, okay? Um, in conjunction with the file name resolver, the um, preprocessor and the postprocessor. Okay, so that gives you a ton of functionality when you think about um, how can I integrate CloudCard between that and, of course, these external script hooks 
which we talked about in an earlier video, there's a ton of functionality that you can kind of fire off as part of the downloader uh, running. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Um, next, we're going to talk about the um, the database storage service, <clears throat> and uh, and then we'll uh, probably have one yeah one more video after that. Um, so two more videos: database storage service and the, the summary service, um, and then we'll be done.